G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, Jay-Z here. Today we have a Renault Megane 250 RS from 2011. 250 horsepower and front wheel drive. That means the front wheels are doing all the steering and delivering all the power. So today we're going to go through all the pros and cons of owning a Renault Megane 250 RS. Again, I'm going to start with the cons today. and Probably the biggest con for me uh, at the moment is the fact that while this is a very fun car to drive, inside it just feels a little bit cheap. They've used really, really interesting materials on the door cards and stuff, and to the touch you can tell that it's not high quality. And unfortunately that does kind of take away from, I guess, the luxury and the enjoyment of being inside the cabin. You know, all the power's there, you've got the six-speed manual gearbox, but you're inside something that just feels a little bit half-hearted. Now, of course, because of this, uh, the Renault was, you know, pretty well priced. Considering that something this powerful could be bought for just in the mid $40,000, that's Australian dollars by the way, uh, and still be oh, so cheap to buy today as well. And being able to keep up with cars that are, you know, $10,000, $20,000 more expensive, that's pretty special. Unfortunately, the cheapness doesn't really end on the inside of the cabin either. On the outside, you'll commonly see moisture collecting in the rear tail lights or imperfections on the paint job from factory, including dried blobs of paint all over the paintwork. However, if you're someone that isn't really bothered by the way your car looks or you know you aren't bothered too much by luxury and are purely looking for a performance car, I'm happy to report that these little niggles really don't affect the performance of the car at all. Now, I'm someone that's used to driving Japanese cars. They're very comfortable, they're very simple. This is a French car and one of only two French cars that I've ever driven before and the first that's a manual. And what was really interesting for me when I first got in and even after I adjusted the seat position and such was just the really weird position that the clutch was in. The accelerator and the brakes are exactly where you would expect them to be in terms of height um, and ease to access with your feet, but the clutch is is not level with the with the accelerator and the brake. It seems to really be sticking up. So to get on top of the clutch, you always have to lift your whole leg up and then place your leg on top of the clutch. It's a little bit uncomfortable. However, it is a really light clutch, so it's not you know terrible. It would be a lot worse if the clutch was heavy but it just really feels like the clutch is sticking out. And even after you've adjusted your seat position, the, the dials, the speedos and everything on the dash here is at a really weird angle. It's like flat and it's really hard to see exactly where the needle's pointing in terms of how fast you're going. So it's you really got to lean over. And then when you do that, you hit your head up here and it's just, it's all wrong. It should be at a better angle, but it's not. Again, a little niggle, it's not all that bad, you do get used to it after a little while, but I don't understand why it's on such a flat angle. Another little niggle for me is that the indicator is on the left side of the steering wheel, um, which is a little bit annoying because I like to have my hand on the gear shift when I'm turning corners, and I don't want to be fiddling around with indicators with the hand that I'm supposed to be changing gears with, especially when you need to change down to slow down to turn corners. Uh, it would have been really helpful if the indicator stick could have been on the right hand side here But again, just one of those little niggles. It is something you do get used to after you've been driving the car for a little while I will be the first to admit that the Renault does have a bit of a problem with blind spots The back window is tiny and the pillars between the back window and the back passenger windows is huge so Yeah, blind spots are definitely there you're always second guessing yourself when you're merging lanes trying to pick if someone's actually there or not. So that is a bit of an issue. But just a niggle really. Now of course, me being a fan of Japanese cars, I was also a huge fan, especially in my teenage years, of huge, loud, bassy sound systems. The Renault is not going to give you that at all. The four inch speakers in the 
driver and passenger doors are quite weak. They're clean enough, but there's nothing there that's going to give you any bass whatsoever. And if you're someone that really enjoys their music and, you know, bass drops and whatever, and that just gives you some sort of excitement when driving the car rather than actually just driving the car, then that is going to be a bit of a disappointment for you. But this car wasn't designed to be, you know, a boombox. Come on, get like a Stagia or a Cube if you're going to do that. This was designed to be a pure performance weapon. And that's exactly what Renault gave us. For practicality, you're not actually really going to fit anyone in those back seats at all. Uh, just pretend that they're not there. Um, they say it's a five-seater. I wouldn't put anyone back there um, because it would, uh, I guess, come very close to torture. It's very claustrophobic. There's not really any windows for them to look out of because the styling has made those rear windows like tiny triangles. So. It won't be comfortable for any more than two passengers, that's for sure. But for short rides, yeah, whatever, not going to be an issue. The driver's seats have me uh, like a memory, so you can move those seats forward and then return them to the exact same position at the push of, or the pull rather, of one lever. So that's no issue there either. But I mean, unless you were driving someone that you really didn't like, I wouldn't pop anyone in the back there. <laughs> On to the pros, and I think the pros list for this car is a lot longer than the, than the cons, really. We'll start off with one fantastic little thing about this car, is the six-speed gearbox. And not just because it is a six-speed gearbox, but just the way it's been laid out. There is no way that you accidentally hit reverse when you're trying to get first or second, because there is a lock on the gear stick, which needs to be pressed before it'll actually let you go to reverse. So you can be really harsh with this gearbox, knowing that you run zero risk of accidentally hitting reverse instead of second or first. It's fantastic. My older cars don't have that feature and I remember when I first started out learning how to drive a manual and I was grinding the gears when I was trying to get into to fifth and instead I was hitting reverse. You're not going to have that problem with this car. Another really fantastic thing about the gearbox is just how easy it is to use. It's like shifting through butter. My MX-5, which is a manual, is one of the hardest shifters to shift. It's like you've really got to work your muscles to get it into gear. And for me, that's a problem because I damaged my left hand when I was about 15 or 16 years old. and that gets really, really sore when I'm shifting quite hard. And so sometimes I can't, well, most of the time, I can't take the MX-5 on long trips because my hand will just get too sore. Whereas this manual here is absolutely effortless. I could change the gears with one finger. It's, it, it's like shifting through butter. It really is fantastic. Now, some people will complain because it feels like they're not really connected to the car. It is almost like driving an automatic, it's that easy. But, for sheer comfort, you cannot complain. Another really, really fantastic thing about this car is the noise. Oh, far out. That is a stock exhaust. It's such a brilliant sounding car and it's not obnoxious either. It's really quiet when you're being gentle, but when you want that noise, boy oh boy does it give it to you. It's so fun to drive. One thing I'm a huge fan of in this car is, although it is front wheel drive, the French have put a limited slip differential in the front, which means no torque steer. So good. You can absolutely pound the throttle and it will go where you put the steering wheel. It won't have a mind of its own and then quickly dart right or quickly dart left. No, it'll go in exactly the direction that you've put the steering wheel and that is fantastic for a front wheel drive. Absolutely brilliant. If it's one thing I do truly love about French cars, it's French styling. This car is absolutely beautiful to look at and that's not something that a lot of car companies can say about themselves. This is genuinely good looking. And let's not forget, this is a hatchback. Hatchbacks aren't usually the prettiest cars on the road, although they are getting a lot better, let's just admit that. But this really is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking car. The French know how to style a car. And now onto the elephant in the room. 
250 horsepower in a front wheel drive. Um, wow, that's a lot. And for a small car as well, this doesn't weigh a whole lot either, to be honest. It's only just over 1.4 tonne. 250 horsepower is not a little amount of horsepower. Not for a hatchback. This thing is quick. It's quicker than any car I've ever owned, including the Stagia, which we reviewed a couple of months ago. It's incredible, and boy oh boy, for a front wheel drive, does it hug the road as well. Front wheel drives are really prone to understeer, but this, this is such a, it's such a wide car. It's got the over fenders, it's really, really wide. Uh, got wide tires. It handles really sharp corners as if it was an all wheel drive. It does not feel like in any sense a front wheel drive. You wouldn't know unless someone told you because you don't get any torque steer. You don't get any understeer. It's just so well designed. It really is a massive credit to Renault. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Renault have improved so much as a brand purely because of the release of this car and also the Clio uh, 200 RS as well. Before this, Renault were just some, you know, relatively cheap, small car, small engines, economic little hatchbacks, you know, fairly unreliable family cars. This is a statement by Renault. They're not here to fool around. When it comes to the hot hatch market, they are a real competitor. And to be honest, there's not a lot of cars that can compete with them anymore. The release of the i30N may be something that could get close to competing with something like this. Maybe the new Civic Type R. But boy, oh boy, when you look at the Civic Type R and the way it looks and you look at the i30 again and see that it's a Hyundai, why would you not go for the Renault? It's just gorgeous in every way. Surprisingly, the Renault Megane does have quite a good aftermarket selection, but not with all of this cosmetic stuff. It's uh, all performance-based, intercoolers, air intakes, blow-off valves, radiators, all aftermarket equipment. Uh, designed specifically for this car to improve performance. You'll have a hard time finding any sort of body kits or anything like that, but really, why would you want it when the car looks this good already? And the engine is quite easy to tune. They use the same engine in the 265 and the 275 RS, so it's capable of making the power. It just needs the supporting mods first. One really, really awesome thing that excites my inner nine-year-old is fact that this car has a G meter and a boost meter and a throttle meter it's got so much information that it wants to cram down your eyeballs it just how can that not excite your inner child it's so awesome and to see those little electronic uh, bars go up when you push the accelerator down and get boost going it puts a smile on your face every time it really is awesome now the Renault 250 RS came stock with Brembo brakes and they're red and everyone knows that that adds five extra horsepower. No, but seriously, it's a nice touch again with the whole styling thing and something that's also useful for the car as well. It's just, you know, an extra tick in the box for Renault really. Probably my personal favorite thing about this car because I am a bit of a rev head is the fact that other people, other road users on the road, you know, your Commodores, your Falcons, just your, you know, your common Camry, whatever, your Astra, they'll pull up alongside you at the lights and they will see a Renault badge. And Renaults, because they haven't up until recently had a really, really good run with sporty cars, will assume that they can overtake you, accelerate faster than you, and nothing brings more joy to me than seeing the absolute shock on the other driver's face when I overtake them without any trouble whatsoever. <laughs> oh, it's a good feeling. It's so good. Now, probably the thing I probably should have mentioned first in hindsight is the fact that this is actually a hatchback. It's not just a lot of fun, this car. It's also super practical. The back seats fold down. 
in what is already a rather large boot space you can combine you know the you know the practicality of a wagon with the fun of a sports car with a hot hatch and that is why especially in Europe these things are so popular they still are you know taking a bit of time to catch on in Australia yet but if we keep getting cars like this I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that they will one day become one of the most popular cars in Australia too just like they've taken over Britain and the rest of Europe. So I guess to conclude, the Renault is the car that you buy to take to the track and to take to the shops. It's both fast and fun and that is what a hot hatch should be. This ticks all the boxes for a hot hatch and that is why again they were so popular overseas. I absolutely love it. I would recommend it for anyone who's, you know, looking for a bit of fun and doesn't have a huge family or has, you know, little kids. If you've got teenage kids then, um, and this is going to be your only car, then you might struggle getting them in the back there, especially if you've got more than one child. But for anyone else, or for a smaller family, or for a second car, this is, oh, I could not recommend anything better. It's going to put a smile on your face every time and it's going to be practical as well. Everyone, thank you so much for watching my pros and cons review on the Renault Megane 250 RS. Uh, if you like this video, chuck a like below, leave a comment of what you want me to review next. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, well subscribe now, the button's right there, click the bell to get notifications of when I upload, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.